welcome to the Your Message Received podcast. And now, taking your message to the finish line, your host, John Duffin. Hey folks, John Duffin here with Duffin Media. Welcome back to another episode of Your Message Received. Your Message Received is the podcast, the place, the home, the platform to help you find your best most true, authentic business voice. Hell, your most authentic voice. Use it for business. Use it anywhere. Get what you want. Find what you need. Improve your results. Make billions of dollars. Meet the person in your dreams. Can't guarantee those last two <laughs> right away, but we're working on it. Uh, keep liking, watching, listening. Spotify, iHeartMedia, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts, on video, on YouTube. And folks, how we make that magic happen is easy. We find people that walk the walk, that arc of authenticity that I talk about. It's really important to me to bring on people to get us here a little bit faster so that you're not taking as long as I did to get to that place. Today's no exception. I get to introduce to you in Florida by way of the Philadelphia region and a lot of different points inspirational speaker trainer coach leader of the inspired tribe the raw authentic unfiltered <laughs> fulfillment king ed fordyce welcome to the show man out of force for good i i love it man it's great to be here brother that is that makes me happy <laughs> i love it I love it. it. Makes me happy too. And by the way, your shirt's great. So, folks, if you're listening to the episode, it's a really cool Force for Good shirt. And when you watch the same episode again on YouTube, you'll see what I mean. It's a good one. I get excited for people who excite me. And I've gotten the chance recently to get to know Ed through mutual friends of ours. We were talking about it before we went live here. Um, Bruno and Stacy Marcinkowski, amongst others, and I trust their judgment with people, somehow have been trying to get us to connect. Good news, Bruno, we did. Uh, Ed, I want to hear, like, you can come from so many different directions, real estate, coaching, what have you, but I really would like to, to focus on the beginning and early on in terms of everybody's direction to me matters. So I like to hear like from you early on, what were the first rumblings in your head that you thought I got something to say and I need to be able to say it. That is an awesome question. And I would go back to uh, if we're just talking like the last 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. I was doing a training with the brokerage that I was leading at the time. And at the time we were number three in the county and uh, nowhere really on the radar. Mm -hmm. And we were doing a training that uh, we were supposed to follow a certain training. Mm -hmm. And I realized I don't want this. It's three days a week with, with the top 20% of our agents. Mm -hmm. And I realized this isn't going to work. They're not going to show up for this. So I flipped everything around. I got rid of the tables in the, in the training room, made a, a big circle with the chairs. Mm -hmm. And I asked the question, I want to hear from everybody, the happiest day of your life and the saddest day of your life. Mm -hmm. And when I started to see that, that when you start to connect authentically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to a group of people, what happens is absolute magic and the rest was history there i mean there's a lot before that but just what ended up happening over the next five years is that little brokerage in exton pa was ranked number eight mm -hmm. in the united states of america out of all real estate offices and uh and it was me <laughs> it was i had a great team but i'm laughing it's like just this maniac that was you know i love people so much and uh, I'll steal this from my coach. Hmm. Uh, but he, he said, Ed, this is what you do. Your superpower right. is to recognize the superpower in other people and pull it out. Hmm. How did he know you had that gift? Because when did he see I, that yeah. indicator. 
Yeah, he he both he and I have a background with the Tony Robbins organization. Right. So he knew that I crewed with with Tony for 10 years and was around that environment. It's just a volunteer position. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, know, but but you're there. I'm there. I'm I'm in it. I'm learning. And uh and when I would tell him, give him stories about my like my wins for the week, you know, and, and I, I I deal with uh, clients and people and tribal members, as I call them, in and out of the real estate world. But I told him, I said, dude, just this in the past 30 days, two people that belong to my my tribe, my uh, uh, a mastermind that I facilitate. One of the average sale prices went from 190 to five or 677 in real estate. A young lady Last year, 2022, she made 60 grand the whole year. Mm-hmm. Last month, she made 40 grand. And I, I was just like, and of course, all of this with what I do with build your brain, build your body, build your business, mm-hmm. like they're getting healthier. They're losing weight. Mm-hmm. Their relationships are better. It just blows my mind. So just I, over those years doing the repetitions, mm-hmm. I don't know, 15 to 20,000 coaching sessions. Mm-hmm. you can't help but pick up patterns and be able to look and go oh I, I know who you are now I got you I love this what did you see I want to go even further back what did you see in yourself that thought you had the credibility uh in addition to all of the coaching sessions I mean before like like yeah. there there needs to me there's a reason that somebody's like okay I'm gonna fo- not just follow Tony Robbins I, there's a yeah. bunch of people me too uh, but it's also that I'm going to implement what was it in yourself that you're like I got something to say and maybe yeah. somebody will listen to me so <clears throat> I'll speed this up as fast as possible you're good born into a crazy yeah. Irish Catholic family I'm the youngest uh, of seven. Great. Um, uh, at 11, started developing uh, addictive personality, uh, started drinking, had my first blackout at 11. Um, by the time I was a, 19, right. full-blown alcoholic and drug addict mm-hmm. and living a double life. I was still the all-American boy. I was the captain of the team. I was, you know, the all-American boy. Everybody loved Eddie Fordyce. Mm-hmm. And I had this dark side Mm -hmm. and, you know, just blessed uh, by the grace of God on uh, January 21st, 2003, I had that moment of clarity Mm -hmm. and uh, thank God since then, haven't, haven't uh, picked Mm -hmm. up a drink or a drug, which is just mind blowing to me to this day. So I just celebrated 20 years and I about, let's see, it was about a year after that. Okay. Right. I went, I went to a Tony Robbins event. Yep. And what location? The Meadowlands, November 2004. I only asked, mine was in Orlando, Florida, a little bit after 2004, but I'm always curious. I was in Orlando. I built your fire (laughs) in Orlando. I did. Well, we'll get to the fire part. Thank God you kept it safe because (laughs) I I said, I I did it, man. Right. But it was in Orlando. I forget the hotel, Gaylord, something or other, right? Some big mambo place. Anyway, I love this. All right. So you show up and so I show up and I'm carrying all this shame and guilt with me that I'm stupid. I'm a junkie. I'm a drunk. Mm -hmm. They were right. I'm dumb. I'm worthless. Mm -hmm. And I heard Tony's story and I realized like at that moment I was studying him and I went, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I've brought people alive through being the captain of football teams and different teams, like getting the best out of people. I was like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like at that moment, all of this stuff, all of the darkness was Mm -hmm. my gift, man. Okay. My gift. And I learned later on that I am now powerfully positioned to serve the person I once Mm -hmm. was. And man, I can, I I love it. I I love love what I get to do, and that was what flipped me, man. Hmm. That's what flipped me. That was your realization. I love this. So, a couple things. First off, kudos to you. Twenty plus years. I'm grateful when 
I got something in common with you, not just the Tony Robbins thing, but the Irish Catholic family part, me too. Uh, I was 13, you were 11. I was in between eighth grade and high school, uh, my first drink. And I was, and I remember blacking out in our uh, little driveway. I thought it was a big driveway until we sold my parents' home. And then it was like, oh my God, this is tiny. Uh, it was like a dollhouse. And I remember, you know, blacking out and all that stuff. 19, you were saying full blown. How did you know you were full blown? I couldn't control it anymore. And it started to affect my life. I started, and I, I incredible work ethic. Yeah. I'm incredibly tough, mm -hmm. like just physically. Mm -hmm. I started not making it to work. I couldn't get out of bed the next day. Got it. I started getting mm -hmm. sick. I started binging where I couldn't stop at 6 a.m. anymore. I would go till one or two in the afternoon when everything was empty, when everything was gone. Mm, mm, mm. Question in regards to, I love this. And so not just to expose you, it's it's a relief to me that I don't feel quite so all alone <laughs> yeah. in terms of similarities. But you had said you were that combination of all American boy and you had the dark side. I'm always curious, like I try to hide those two personalities not great but i but i tried to right for you was it a case where people were forgiving you because they knew the other side or were you able to keep the secret so to speak i was able to keep the secret for a while okay and you know i go back and it's not his fault but at 16 years old right. i met like a, a a local guy that was like the cool guy the big okay. guy Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Eddie, the only way to get ahead in life is to lie, cheat, and steal. And I had already made the decision for him to be my, like, a mentor to me. And I thought, I want to be cool like them. And I uh, just went into, you know, some not, not, not so good activity, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, again, at the same time, I was Eddie Fordyce. I was Jack's son, the West Catholic guy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's good, mm -hmm. right? Comes from good genes mm -hmm. and you know, what was like, problem. what was it like carrying around the I'm Jack Fordyce's son? So I, I have some knowledge. I used to be like a weirdo nut about following Philadelphia Catholic League sports. So I, it's like I, I, I knew the schools. I knew some of the personalities. This is years ago. But what was it like? Not just you're carrying your own brand so to speak around but you got your dad what was that like carrying that around yeah it was just you know with, with some people that i had worked for at the time it was just a matter simply because my father was went to west catholic yeah you know, if you went to west catholic especially back my father graduated in 1946 mm -hmm. you know you were you were already qualified you were solid mm -hmm. you know and uh mm -hmm. you know my father was a great father had one job his whole life raised ah, that's cool you know my mother never worked, mm -hmm. you know, your dad and, do? And he worked for 3M company. He was a, you know, a salesperson and nice. a town executive and just, that's what he did, man. His I love it. whole life had one mm -hmm. job other than, is it the Warwick in Philadelphia? Well, that's the 17th and uh, 17th and Locust is the yeah, Warwick. He was yeah. a bellhop there uh, when he was in high school, when he went uh, to West Catholic. Uh, but uh, other than uh, that, yeah. So, I mean, my dad wasn't like a flashy guy. He was very, you know, uh, mm -hmm. low key, uh, but just like the local community, because mm -hmm. I was his son, right. I came from West Catholic, mm -hmm. you know, genes. I was already in. Got it. Got it. Got it. Did that feel like pressure to you or did that feel like cool? That was that a good thing? No, yeah, that was cool. Great. It was cool. There was no pressure. Great. Great. I love this. So for me, it's like, okay, so you've been able, like I said, so you've got this, you were talking about flipping the switch and understanding that it's, that it was okay, or that you real, that realization that what the things that you went through enabled or helped you to be able to transform. What would you say was the darkest moment in that for you? Uh, before getting clean and sober? Absolutely. Yeah. I would say there were darkest moments and it was, mm -hmm. it was every time 
I stopped to have just two drinks. And 12 hours later, mm -hmm. I'm got my, literally my face, my hands going, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. That was, those were always the darkest times. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, there was a, there was a one dark time where like, you see, when I think about it, I still get choked up that, um, I was, I was really, I was, the next day I was always really ill. I was really sick. Mm. And, uh, my, my son, who was probably three or four at the time, um, was knocking on the bathroom door and I was vomiting and dry heaving and my nose was gushing blood and mm. just given the graphics. When I talk about this, I don't hold back because I don't want to sugarcoat it. No need uh, to sugarcoat. And, no need. and like, just to hear that innocent little angel, like he knew his daddy was sick, mm -hmm. man. And uh, again, you know, I just went to his wedding and, and, and I'm just like, what a, what a blessing. Uh... I like to see like, like just to feel what I'm feeling now going, thank God, mm -hmm. thank God mm -hmm. I was blessed with this gift. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Or else I wouldn't even be invited to his wedding. Right. Oh, that happens too. You know, uh, I don't have kids. I've, I, I am in recovery and, and I, I remember freaking out siblings and my mom. I can, I mean, for mold and, and really close friends. And I could give you like you a hundred examples. I, that, that, but the chilling thing, when you said the two to the conclusion, um, I, 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 that was all the time. I never once intended to go out and get hammered. Never. I was all about like pretense and not, it, like I didn't want to look bad. It wasn't like I thought I looked all good. It was the opposite. I I had very low self esteem, so I felt like anything that would make me in any way off was a problem. And then, an indefinite number of times, it was the case. And you you know about getting sick or gross like me, you don't hold back. It's like I guess I'm not either. Yeah. Uh, there was you know, there was one other dark me time. Wet bed, me wet in beds or me. You know I mean yeah. it just just it disgusting. All happens. You know winding yeah. up in, in the roundhouse for me a uh, couple of three different DUIs and I think for me uh, one of the darker moments was being in a courtroom and it was like the judge saying second DUI for me and I remember my mom was there and my sister I'm nuts about both of them and they're still alive and it's like I'm crazy about both of them and I could just remember they're there with me as support and it had to be horrific for them you know uh and I could still hear the judge. My mom remembers it because she told me, you know, no, Mr. Duffin, don't misunderstand. You are going to jail. Yeah. That line. And, 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 and I had to allow my mom and my oldest sister to older sister, older, younger sister, sorry, to hear that. So it's like, what's crazy to me and this is my next question which is this you said you had this moment of clarity in 2003 what made that moment different than every other moment where you were i ain't if you were me it ain't happening again that's the end that moment i shared with you was about 17 years before i stopped <laughs> mm. so there was a lot more of the i can't believe it how about for you? What was, what, yeah. what made it different? Yeah. I wish I could take credit for it. And, and, uh, it was, uh, January 20th, right. 2003, the Eagles were playing the Buccaneers in the playoff mm, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, didn't go on my worst binge, but it was pretty bad. Right. Ended up, uh, in a crack house mm -hmm. in media. I owned a bar in media. I owned a bar and restaurant, the West end saloon at the time. Got it. Got it. And, got it. um, ended up in this, little crack house and uh i had passed out and i came to and i went to use the bathroom mm -hmm. and when i walked in the bathroom i my i literally heard the sound of my body shutting down like a hard drive mm -hmm. and then my chest started to convulse right and i knew my heart was exploding mm -hmm. i'd overdone it i grabbed the sink and i looked myself in the mirror and i said mm -hmm. f mm -hmm. i overdid yeah. it this time Mm -hmm. And I knew I was dying and I knew I was going back down. So mm -hmm. 
All I could think of was whoever found me, I didn't want them to find me in a puddle of blood. So I wanted to sort of every last like breath I had, I was holding onto the sink so mm -hmm. I could just fall on my side, rolled over, didn't split my head open. Mm. And when I came to, and I don't know if it was five minutes later or five hours later or 10 hours later, I have no clue. I just calmly said, that's it. Wow. I'm done. Mm. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a conscious decision. It wasn't emotional mm -hmm. like the other thousand times. Sure. Yeah, right. I'm done. I swear that. Right. And yep. I went home to my wife at the time and I mm -hmm. said, your husband's a drunk and a junkie and I'm done. She said, good. I called a buddy of mine mm -hmm. who uh, I had fired a year and a half earlier for being a junkie and a drunk. <laughs> called him and said, and he'd been sober for about a year and two months. And I called mm -hmm. him and I said, dude, I'm all messed up. What do I do? He said, we're <clears throat> meeting at Bano's Pizza tonight in Westchester. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go hit a meeting. I'll mm -hmm. pick you up. Great. Walked into Bano's Pizza. There were six or seven guys there right around my age. Mm -hmm. And the one dude just looked at me. He goes, yo, dude, welcome, man. You're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You're just like us. Mm -hmm. You just can't put booze and drugs in your body. And I don't know about you, dude, but my whole life, I never felt comfortable in my own skin. Oh, mm -mm. and alcohol and drugs yeah. mm -hmm. is what made me feel like a mm -hmm. person. Yeah. And hanging out with those guys made me feel like a person. And I heard, uh, I heard, uh, uh, saw a clip of Oprah interviewing, um, oh crap, one of the wild men actors, um, Charlie, Sh not Charlie Sheen, the other one who played Rocket Man, whatever his name was. Um, Damn, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Yeah, I can't think of his name. But anyway, said to him, man, that must be really hard to stay clean and sober. Right. And he goes, uh, Robert Downey Jr. That's Thank you. Name. Okay, yeah. got it, got it, got it. Yeah. And he goes, actually, it's not. And mm -hmm. she goes, really? And he goes, yeah, the hard part is making that decision. Mm -hmm. And my this was only like four months ago. My head blew off and I went, you know what? Mm -hmm. I never really struggled from January 21st, mm -hmm. 2003 on. I maybe had a little urge, mm -hmm. but I was done. I always yeah. say that respect all beliefs mm -hmm. and non-beliefs. God just removed it mm -hmm. from me. And I have a, I'll tell you on another podcast, the mm -hmm. vision that I had like 10 years later mm -hmm. of that night of me dying and what God did with my soul. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's it, man. That's a lot, man. And it's great because to me, I think one of the most revelatory things is, is that sense of it's not just that things are going to be OK and, and you believe them. But it's more the sense that you said I never felt comfortable in my own skin. I didn't either. God almighty. I didn't come out of the closet until I was 40. And I was hammered when I did it a couple of times. I would say the first time I really came out of the closet in earnest, sober, I was I was 42. So it, it's like never felt true and right. That's the whole point of this show. That's the whole point is... I believe in my heart there's a, that path to authenticity. Everybody has it in them. And yeah. it doesn't need to be your story or mine or even anything like it. I just like the fact that it already answers a question. But I'm going to ask you this next one anyway. You're sitting on all this information. Now. I mean, you know, all right, this is great. And I'm this. And I, I took care of that. And blah, blah, blah. What flipped the switch for you to think, okay, I can help other business people with what I know, what I feel, what I do, all that sort of thing. When did that jump into place? I get the personal part. That's that's fine. Now, how did you worth think I got I got a like a story to tell and there's a bit maybe, you know, the guy could help somebody in business. Yeah, it what flipped was I I I looked at some successful people right and i'll give you like how it sounds so yeah. i'll ask somebody that's making a few hundred thousand in real estate mm -hmm. right and i'll say hey tell me about how do you do that 
mm-hmm. and they'll go, well, I go into the office from mm-hmm. eight to 11 and I, you know, sit, I've got my mirror, I've got the scripts and I call and I look at them and I say, so you're a telemarketer mm-hmm. and they go, no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. And I said, there's nothing wrong with it. You just have to know that you're a telemarketer. That's what telemarketers do. They have a list, they make phone calls right? and they get, and I said, look, I'm, I'm here to serve you. How does your soul feel mm-hmm. at the end of that? And usually they'll go into something like, well, I used to be healthy. Now I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, and what I realized was helping them again, take the masks off, right? The CEO mask, the mega agent mask, Mm -hmm. the millionaire mask, the this mask, the regional Mm -hmm. director mask. Mm -hmm. I want to know what makes you tick Mm -hmm. so that I always bring up the five regrets of the dying so that when the good Lord's taking you, man, you're like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I don't have any regrets. Mm -hmm. So I started tapping into more than just a PL. Yeah, great. That, that's that's mm-hmm. my thing. Let's talk about like making money is easy. There, mm-hmm. There's the science of achievement. There's an equation to all of that. Where I come in is let's connect the art of fulfillment to that. So you have a great mm-hmm. life, man. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. Uh, as you were building, like as you're trying, and, and I'm thinking more in regards to you than others, but it all kind of connects in, in a way to me, which is as you're, as you are realizing, I got something to say, and it's more than just a business model. And I want to connect these pieces. How long do you remember? Let's say the first time that you were either having a one-on-one conversation or a group conversation. And in your head, you're like, you know what, this, I think I got something here. I, and, and, and whether it was the feeling of you use the word fulfillment, good, by the way, um, fulfillment for you is what I'm thinking more so than fulfillment for them. And then we'll gladly get to them. When did in your mind, did it feel like fulfillment? I'd have to go to the first thing I think of is a, a program that I started in 2010 called 90 days to greatness. Okay, cool. And it was seeing incredible human beings, Mm -hmm. mothers, fathers, business owners Mm -hmm. for the first time in their life, be able to say, I'm suffering in this area of my life. Right. This is my secret that I don't want anyone to know or ever know. And that's when I knew I've got a gift of asking Mm -hmm. the questions Mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't offend people and Mm -hmm. actually gives them relief Mm -hmm. where they're like, Oh, I wish you didn't ask me that question, but I'm so glad you did. And I've had some intense conversations Mm -hmm. one-on-one. I'll give you an example. I uh, did a coaching session with a beautiful, uh, beautiful black woman. And I said, well, what's your goals? And she said this, and I said, why aren't you hitting them? And she said, I don't know. And And I said, can I ask you a question that no one has the love in their heart or the balls to ask you? And she said, yeah. And I said, do you let being black hold you back from being successful? And she looked at me and then she put her head down and she said, yes. And I said, when you go home today, look in the mirror, you're looking at the biggest racist, you know, because you're judging yourself. You're already saying because of this. And again, it's all love in my heart. And other people are like, I can't believe you said that. Like, and you're like, you're in a corporation. Like you, I was like, I, the people come first. I'm willing to risk that conversation to make sure that this human being knows that I care about it. I'm not going to, once you get in my web, I'm not going to let you fail. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask questions that no one else will ask. So the next question that I asked was uh, because she, she, I said, are you scared about your future? And she started crying. And I said, can I ask you a couple of questions? And Mm -hmm. she said, she couldn't talk at this point. She said, yeah. And I said, "Uh, are you sick? And she goes, no. And I said, "Do do you have children? She said, yeah. I said, how many? She put up her hand one. I said, 
are you afraid that you can't uh, provide for your daughter? Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah. And I stood up, I shook her hand, I grabbed her and hugged her. And I said, I promise you, your, your little girl will never have a scared mama coming home again. You got to trust me. And uh, she joined my organization or our organization that day and her career took off. And it's like, got to do that, man. You got to go there. I, I got to go there. I got to go there. And again, it's the universe, my angels, God, get pushing, going, ask this question, ask this question, mm -hmm. ask this question. And there's no, there's no fear behind it because I know it's divinely guided, man. Mm -hmm. Great. Then that to me, that, that I feel like speaks volumes for a lot of reasons, but one of them is that sense of, I often wonder, you know, as there is a ton of competition in the life, business, brand coaching platform. And I feel like you've answered a lot of those questions. And I think that's great. And I also really appreciate your candor with it. So now let me ask you this. So now you've, re you've got this realization and, and in essence, you've got this proof in your mind that you had the courage, that there was the the connection and all that stuff. Now I want to talk a little bit further in regards to what you've been able to do with it, which is to me, a fun story just in itself. Like for me, it, it it's like I, I, I get to watch you've created and, and I feel like even just the groups that you've aligned, I mean, the inspired tribe, right? Um, what was the, I know what it is, but I would ask you, why did you feel that it was needed when you're working with, I'm guessing, higher profile business people? What was the purpose and point of creating the Inspired Tribe? Yeah, well, part of it like was desperation. I was like, I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta think of something, man. I gotta think of something that's different. And well, hard, man. It's really hard, but I feel like you've nailed it. So I just am curious, what was the realization? It's like, oh, I'm going to do that because like I said, I, and then we can get into like a little bit of the nuts and bolts of it. But I like the fact that like I said, it was like, it's, it's impressive. Yeah. So the Inspire Tribe was simply, and I put a lot of thought into this mm -hmm. back then. Right. I wanted to work with inspired people. Mm -hmm. Did I, I don't care what you were doing. Right. Like just inspired people. Mm -hmm. And the idea was we get a group of inspired people together. We get together. And this has happened on a small scale, not as big yet. Yeah. 100 people, the inspired tribe, mm -hmm. we come together once a month for a mastermind. Everybody puts up $100 cash. Mm -hmm. Right. We do a cool training. We, we reprogram our minds. We mastermind together. We learn and love from each other. And then we take that 10 grand and we walk down to the corner diner. We walk in, says, who owns this place? And the <laughs> owner walks up and he, I want your single waitress or a waitress that's a single mom or a right, father right, right, a right. dad who's struggling. Who is it? And you say, hey, there's just a group of crazy people here. We're called the Inspired Tribe. Here's $10,000. I hope it makes your life easy. Mm. Like that was the idea. Now. The other thing is a, a mission that I have, and I'm I'm actually putting the group together now yeah. within the real estate world, is God, the universe, started with Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. put human trafficking, the real name for it is child sex slavery in front of me. Right, right. I and we mm -hmm. will be rescuing a hundred kids a month. Mm -hmm. And I'll just put a, a, there's a movie coming out, John, July 4th. It's called The Sound of Freedom. And this is not, I'm just, I'm pleading with people to go see it. It's the story of Operation Underground Railroad. And it's an organization and an incredible man, his name's Tim Ballard, who gave up his life, his pension, his money to start this, to go rescue these kids. So I hope I answered your question, but the Inspired Definitely. Tribe is a beast that's mm -hmm. growing and forming mm -hmm. differently. Right. But its mission is to make sure that people are waking up excited, going to bed fulfilled and living their dreams in between, living their best life ever. Again, and the way we do that, building your brain, 
building your body, body building your building business, your business. Man, and building your uh, brand. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a beautiful thing, man. Um, you talk about with like the sense of you've helped people in regards to burnout and unfulfillment and that sort of thing. I don't know why that resonates to me. I went through it in my corporate life. And, and one of the reasons I feel like, like sometimes it works out, right? And, and, and I was going to say, so for myself, that career ended and I have no regrets, but it doesn't always work out in the sense that people make bad decisions when they're burned out. And so for me, I, when I saw like, you know, that sense of who gravitating toward that, what are some of the things that you've been able to accomplish to help people get out of that specific mindset? Yeah. The first is them. It's just like anything. The first step admitting that you have a problem. Right. Right. And it's like a lot of times Um, I'll go, I'll ask somebody, what did you dream about? Or what, what did you want to become when you were a little kid? mm -hmm. Right. How does that correlate with what you're doing now? Right. Right. How do you feel at the end of the day? Is this something Mm -hmm. you dreamed about? Right. And I lived it too. Mm -hmm. Right. I did what I had to do and it served as like everything. It served its purpose now, but burnout Mm -hmm. going to, and I know you know this, but the exact time that the most heart attacks occur are Monday morning at like eight o'clock. God, I used to call it Sunday night syndrome. And so leading into Monday at 8 a.m., you know, right. Yeah. So my job is like, mm-hmm. is I want, number one, people to be aware of it. Mm-hmm. And what's going on inside them, your adrenal glands are burning out. Your uh, immune system is compromised mm-hmm. because you're, we're always in this stress mm-hmm. because we're doing something and whatever somebody, whoever somebody believes in created them, created them for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. So we have this blueprint in in us of what Mm -hmm. we're supposed to be doing, but the world tells us, no, you need, and there's nothing wrong with wearing a a, a suit and tie. I'm just using it as an example. You need to get this education, get Mm -hmm. this master's degree so you can become an attorney and blah, 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 blah. blah, Right. And, and there's, Mm -hmm. and then we're, we're stuck in this because that's what everybody expects from us. Right. And it's, Inside, we're getting sick. Mm-hmm. And what I do is just ask a series of questions of, hey, man, like if you if you could be anything you wanted to be, mm-hmm. right? A billion dollars came into your bank account right now. What would you do? And usually it'll say, oh, I'd start a, mm-hmm. uh, a chartering business, a, a fishing business. Right. And I go, why aren't you doing that now? Mm-hmm. Well, because I have to do this. All right, cool. Let's start putting a plan together. Because once you plant the flag, three years out, five years out, then the stuff that we don't like to do yeah. doesn't become so bad. Right. Because we know there's an expiration date. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love all of that in the sense that it's like, you know what, what was running through my mind? And you gave the example of the woman that you, in terms of the real estate situation. And, and, and I think about this, why it's so important to speak of burnout, mental, mental challenges, me, any sort of mental illness. I've gone through plenty with anxiety yes. and whatever. I believe it just, it, it, it's just, I don't mean to jump on a soapbox here, but for myself, it's like, you know, I just, you were talking about the suit and all that stuff. I was identified as the guy in the suit for close to, oh my God, I was in my broadcast ad sales life for over 25 years, between 25 and 30. And so, and I worked a lot. So it was like, whether it was to try to impress myself or overcompensate or people please or whatever it was, I I worked a lot. And so I was in the suit a lot. And I can remember when that ended and burnout was a big part of it for me, you know, um, my questions become like, you know, was it really time? F- I'll just speak for me. Was it really time for me to stop? Or was I just mentally messed up? You know, uh, I think it's really important to find people. And I'm glad you do in that regard, too, because not every answer is, I want to be an entrepreneur. 
it has worked out for me. It does feel true and right for me. I have gotten past that, but it felt weird for at least a year and probably longer convincing myself that I didn't feel less than because I was walking around in a polo shirt or a t-shirt or blah, blah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And worrying about what people would think. So I like the fact that you are able to find that too, because you're tapping into people often, as you said, that are doing well. And, and, you know, I think the fulfillment part sometimes can be an internal job too. Do you think your dad was fulfilled? Excuse me? Do you think your dad was fulfilled? Had one job, you know what I mean? Yeah, this would be my guess. No one's asked me that question. Mm -hmm. my, my guess would be because that's what was to work for 3M, to be able to work from home, mm -hmm. to be able to coach me in little league. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say he was fulfilled. Yeah. Be happy. In, in those days, mm -hmm. that was fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe today it, it wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And that usually what happens, John, is I'll get a call from a wife usually or yeah. a sister. Yeah. And they'll say something like, Ed, my brother, my husband's been to every therapist, every doctor, every dietitian, mm -hmm. every psychoanalyst, everything. Mm -hmm. You're we know you're the only guy that can help them. Mm -hmm. And and I laugh and I'm like, are you sure I got thrown out of college with a 0.69 grade point average, man? Like I've read over 1500 books on this stuff, but are you sure? <laughs> um, but usually they're the ones that step in and intervene, mm -hmm. you know? And then it, a lot of times it's this simple. The first question I'll ask is how much water do you drink a day? Mm. A lot of times, John, the, the problem, the root is dehydration. By the way, this is second a, thing is I'll ask show as anything, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. The second thing uh, would be about like what kind of nutrition they put in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing would be their self-talk. Mm -hmm. So like if anybody listening here, if you want to just do a simple exercise, just start writing out this statement. I now know and believe. I now know and believe. I now know and believe I'm healthy. I now know and believe I'm healing. I now know and believe I'm strong. I now know and believe I'm worthy. I now know and believe. I now know and believe. I now know and believe. And like there's, uh, when my kids were babies, uh, I still have it memorized. My youngest is 22. So it's been like 20 years, mm -hmm. but I would lay down next to them and I'd say, mommy loves you. Daddy loves you. God loves you. You were born perfect. Mm -hmm. Everything comes easily, frequently, and in abundance. Money, joy, peace, freedom, great health, great wealth comes mm -hmm. easily, frequently, and in abundance. You're perfect just the way you are. You are a gift to the world. Mm -hmm. And I literally, like I've learned a lot about the brain and how to wire it, and rewire it, and program it. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, like we can reprogram mm -hmm. our brains. Neuroplasticity is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> Right. So like some people call it woo woo. I call it science. Mm -hmm. And I know if somebody writes those it things, out, yeah. mm -hmm. everything changes, man. Everything changes. You just did something. We're not in real time. So folks, as you're listening to this, this happened a little bit ago, but you just did something that you concluded. You did a 40 hour fast, which I've never done in my life. So you walk the walk. You're not just talking to people. You just concluded something I have never even approached a 40 hour fast. What do you now know and believe? Yeah, I now, know and, I now know and believe that our, my body my body does not need much food to thrive on. Mm -hmm. I now know and believe that, dude, I, it just, I just sort of fell into it. I've done a 24 hour fast and that was a struggle. That's a lot. And I just thought to myself, like, hey, man, first of all, if I'm going to be leading people, number one, I need to test some of these theories. Mm -hmm. Right. So I need to be way out. Some of the, the, the brotherhood, it's a small group of men, mm -hmm. right? That are, dude, they are, they are on point. I, I got to get my butt up early in the morning and get moving it because they're going to pass me, which I know they already have in a lot of ways. Right. But what I learned was it's amazing what the power of decision 
is I did not say to my, and look, I fail all the time. In this instance, I did not say, I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to try it. Mm. I got to 18 hours. I was going to do a 24 hour fast. I intermittent right. fast every day. Yep. But I went, you know what? Because my coach, my coach did a 40 hour fast. Mm -hmm. And I went, I'm going to do the 40 hour, 40 hour fast. It's already done. I love it. I absolutely I love it. So let me ask you this as an insp a, a guy who inspires a lot of people who inspires you. Oh boy. Like the easy answer is my kids. Um, I, I just, my son just released another song. I walk around the gym and tell people I'm the only guy here that listens to his son's playlist mm. with my ear pods. You know how lucky I am. And they're like, you're a freak. Get away from me. Right? <laughs> but seriously, my, my kids do inspire me. Um, somebody like Tim Ballard who gave up his career right. for a mission inspires me. Um, you know, and, and, and I mean this modestly, I, ins yeah. I'm inspired by me, man. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm inspired by by going I, I'm showing other men I'm 56 mm -hmm. other men what's possible. Mm -hmm. I want to show other human beings what's possible. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired because I I'll, I'll I'll go to Austin with 200 200 dollars and 5 dollar bills and mm -hmm. I love to talk to homeless people as long as they're mentally with it. You go tell me your story. I'm not just going to give you your, give you money. I I always give the money. That's just my thing. Yeah. I, I want to hear your story. I want to. What's your name? My name's Ed. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I think Matthew McConaughey said, like he he's chasing his own hero, mm -hmm. right? And there's nothing wrong with like I want to be my own hero, man. You know. But also, of course, the uh, um. Reverend uh, Rick Rigsby inspires me. Right. Uh, Tony Robbins inspires me. Ed Milet inspires mm -hmm. me. You inspire me. Right. I'm like, dude, I want to, I want to get on your podcast, man. Right. Like right. anybody that's been through hell, yeah. and back, anybody's got that story. Mm -hmm. They inspire me, man. I love it. Well, listen, <laughs> Ed Fordyce, you inspire me. I am absolutely blown away in terms of what I've learned so far. So I know you got a website. The link to that website will be right here, folks. So you don't have to look far. Just glance down as you're watching or listening. You will find the website here. Where else are the best places to find you, Ed? How do people get to you? Facebook, Insta, TikTok, LinkedIn. Oh. You know, that, that's the easiest place to connect I think with me or to just mm -hmm. to get me to get to know me, you yeah. know, and uh, that's the best place. I love it. Folks, I am blown away. Ed, you just made my day. I feel more jazzed up. And, and that authenticity part is a big deal to me selfishly. I want to learn more because that, got, like I said, if I can help people, great. But selfishly, I it, it's who's true and right and stuff. No question, you are. And I'm really grateful to you. And I'm grateful for you for showing up today. So, Ed Fordyce, thanks for making the time. I highly acknowledge you and I appreciate you. Back at you, brother. Thanks for having me, man. It's been great. 100%. Folks, you've just heard another episode of Your Message Received. Keep watching, liking, listening, sharing. Tell your family, tell your friends. That arc to authenticity, that road, it gets way easier. Just take a couple of steps. I'm John Duffin with Duffin Media. Have a great rest of the day. We will drive some more content through your front door soon. Have a great day, all. Bye. And now, making its way across the finish line, your message received has been a production of Duffin Media.